Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good people. Ah, yeah, you know what it is. Hard worker, scrappy, unfiltered, and sometimes unhinged football content. Hard to explain, but you know it when you see it. Doing it daily our way. I don't know what you're talking about right now. Redraft and Dynasty Fantasy Football, we got you covered. You know their defense is ranked like 31st in the NFL? NFL draft prospects and rookies? Now you know you in the right place for that. Absolutely. All right, then stop saying it. Then we're done. And prop bets with my man Jay Rich. Count that money, man. Now wipe the crust out of your eyes. Get you a cup of coffee. It's time to wake your ass up with Ray G. You honestly are making absolutely no sense and you sound silly as hell. G M G P. It is Monday, March 18th, 2024. Y'all decided to wake y'all asses up with your boy Ray G. And y'all know I appreciate each and every last one of y'all in the damn building this morning. Hey, shout out to my dog, Fizzle Dollars. He is on. The intro was popping with you, Fizzle. Good morning to you. We got Robin from Germany in the building. Good morning to you, Robin. Appreciate you tapping in the building. Yeah, right here, Kong the King. Russ and Fields, GM, GDMP. We gonna talk about it. We got a lot to get to. Jay, I hear you already in the back. With the, with the Sounders, we got Leo Scott, Toronto Dave, Jerry in the building, Taylor Wolf, Garrison as always, Brandon, Ty Claire, Marty, Tommy Sosa, John, Alex, Eric, Brian, good morning to everybody in the building. Man, it's crazy. It feels like free agency has been going on for like three weeks now, but Jay Rich and I did the show on Monday and we didn't get to talk about any signings because we did the show 8 a.m. on Monday. Everything else kind of transpired as soon as we wrapped up the show. So we've got a lot to get into from a free agency standpoint, but I'm very excited and want to talk about a, a partnership that we have for the 2024 season. That's right. Underdog Fantasy and DD, we're going all in together this year from start to finish from right now all the way to, to 2025. We're doing best ball, underdog drafts all summer. Myself, Scott Connor, we will be taking down the BBM $4 million competition this year. And then Jay Rich and myself, starting next week, we will do a weekly pick em show where we just go have some fun, man. We try to find some props that we like. We talk through some plays that we like. We'll be doing that live on Wednesdays at 8 a.m., so make sure you check us out. Very excited about this new partnership with Underdog Fantasy. And the good news for y'all is, y'all already know, we do a big at Destination Debbie. And this year, for the 2024 NFL Draft, we will be streaming live Night one, night two, and the entire day three, rounds four through seven. We gave some stuff away last year. We had a 1,000 people in the building, but we want to do it bigger and better this year. So along with Jay Rich and myself, Scott Connor, Shane Manila, the Trades in Five team, they rocking with DD for the draft stream. And we're going to be doing some massive giveaways during the draft. Access to the Discord, roster reviews from Shane and Scott. And we got a lot of promotional items that we want to give away too. So I'm just going to let you know a very simple way how to enter the contest and get some of this giveaway stuff. Let me just show you a little bit of what we got. Got a Travis Hunter card right here. I don't know y'all collect cards, but there's Travis Hunter. Probably going to be a top five pick next year. Jay Rich, let me show the people what else we got. Let me show the people what else we got. We got the reigning got? MVP signed Lamar Jackson jersey. Jay Rich airhorn that one. We got Puka Nakua. We got Puka Nakua from the Rams. Giving that away for the draft. We got Bijan Robinson giving away Big Bijan for the draft, giving that away. We got Rasheed Rice from the Chiefs giving that away. Johnny Football giveaway. What? You you like Trey McBride? Big Trey McBride, oh, Trey we McBreezy, go. we giving what? that away. Jay, we got Blake Corm autograph, giving Ooh. Blake Corm away. There we Sam go. Laporta, Lions jersey, giving that. All of this stuff, we're giving away that plus more. All you got to do is go to Underdog Fantasy and use the code DDD, Destination Debbie Draft. Code DDD, you don't get one entry, you get two entries, and you can win multiple times. I don't give a shit if you win all five jerseys. You put your name in, you go to Underdog Fantasy, use the code DDD, you put $10 in Underdog Fantasy. Not only do they match you 10 but you get entered into the contest. We'll mail that out as long as you ain't international. If you're in Canada or Germany and you win... We could talk on the side if you want to pay for that ship, and I'll send it out to you. But if not, we'll replace that jersey with something else. But all you got to do is go to Underdog Fantasy, use code DDD, free entry into the contest. Jay Rich, what you think about all that shit we're giving away for the draft, man? We're doing it big this year, baby. 
Sounds good. Sounds good. Can I can I enter in this contest? Am no. I allowed to do that? I can make some underdog accounts, right? No, no? doesn't. No, oh, well, I mean, make an account, but yeah. you can't enter. You don't get access, right. man. Absolutely All right. not. All right. All right. Absolutely All right. not. Jay, how you doing this morning, though, baby? I'm good, man. Good. A little sick this weekend, but uh, yeah. yeah, you know, just going through all of the signings. I mean, obviously the major ones we'll talk about today, but even just some of the minor ones, very interesting, you know, making a list. I probably got a list of 70, 80 names on here. Ones obviously we're not going to get to, but just interesting from a, how do they fit in standpoint? Why are they on this team? What could their role be? Like, Yes, we care about the major stuff, fantasy football, but there is some small intricacies that you can find within some of these signings that can also be valuable down the line as well. So we'll probably talk about that in the Discord. If you want to join the Discord, patreon.com forward slash all gas. But definitely some underrated signings to go along with the countless major signings that we had and trades, obviously, last week. All right, Jay, well, where you want to start at today, man? There's a, like I said, there's a lot to get to. I love how you outline this. You just want to talk through the quarterback signings real quick and just... Kind of yeah, highlight the ones who, and I know you're feeling bad, so I'll take the lead on this. I'll take the lead. You can sit back and relax a little bit, and we'll just kind of react to this. But let's talk through the QB signings, Jay. And there was a lot of stuff that went on, but the biggest one by far was Kirk Cousins' four-year deal, eight, $180 million with the Atlanta Falcons. Kirk money, Cousins, count yes, that count that money, money Kirk Cousins, to the Atlanta Falcons, Jay. Your just initial thoughts and reactions, this is a spot that, you know, early in the pre-free agency process, a lot of people thought Justin Fields would be at this spot, but it didn't happen. Kirk Cousins winds up in Atlanta. What do you think about that spot? I think it's best case scenario for everyone involved, right? All the players that we wanted to have a quarterback, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Bijan Robinson, they all needed a quarterback. We all knew that. And Kirk Cousins is probably the best available pretty easily outside of maybe that, you know, Lamar Jackson idea that was floated around last offseason. Uh, Kirk Cousins is probably the best of the best. What they get out of them, how it all works together, we're going to find out. But playing in that Rams, Kevin O'Connell, Sean McVay style offense that Kirk Cousins knows and has played in his entire career, definitely a great starting point for the offseason. Now it's just how does he gel with the receivers? Who's his guy beyond Drake London? I think we both expect him to be the major factor. But Kirk, going to be there for the long term. So great for all of the playmakers in the offense for as long as we have them on our fantasy rosters. I'm curious how this affects their ADP because does it get a little too crazy for some of these players? But as far as Kirk goes, he's going to probably be dynamite again. Can he be a top 12 guy? Potentially, uh, but playing in that NFC South is definitely a great thing for Kirk Cousins and great for that offense as a whole because they're probably going to put up big numbers against a lot of bad teams. I'm with you. I mean, there's not, I mean, you kind of touched on everything and everybody's had at least about a week to digest this one. It's good for Drake London. It's good for Kyle Pitts. It's you know, I think it's good for those pass catchers. B. John Robinson now has a quarterback that could put him in scoring position a little bit more this year with Kirk Cousins. So I think this is an overall significant net positive for the Falcons. I think this was their best case outcome walking out of free agency in the NFL draft. So good for Kirk Cousins and good for those weapons. We also had Gardner Minshew sign a two-year $25 million deal with the Raiders. Jacoby Brissett on a one-year deal with the Patriots. Sam Darnold. One-year deal with the Vikings. Drew Locke also signed a one-year deal with the Giants. Jimmy Garoppolo. I like the landing spot of the Rams for him. This is a player that yep. has got experience in the league. And the Rams, they knew that they kind of messed up that backup quarterback position last year when they kind of relied on Stetson Bennett. Things didn't work out there. And Matthew Stafford, as great as he is, probably going to miss a couple of games due to some injury, being banged up. He's a little older in his career. So having Garoppolo as just... A, a high level, you know, competent backup is is pretty good for the Rams. I like that. Jameis Winston, weird quarterback room in Cleveland. They signed another potential guy that can go in there and play games if need be, yep. if Watson isn't all the way right or gets banged up. Marcus Mariota, one year deal with the Commanders. Desmond Ritter was traded for your boy, Rondell Moore, traded to the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> Rondell Moore to the Fac Falcons, Desmond Ritter to the Cardinals. Interesting one here, Jay. Let's spend a little time talking about Sam Howell being traded to the Seattle Seahawks. And a lot of people thinking as Sam Howell is somehow a threat to Geno Smith, which I think is asinine. Really? You don't think he's on, got a shot? I, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Not a chance in hell. That's pure fantasy football hopium. You put Sam Howell next to Geno Smith on a practice field, and it's not even close who the better quarterback is. I think that is pure Hopium, he's a backup quarterback. They lost Drew Locke. They need somebody there if Geno can't play. I don't think there's a chance in hell Sam Howell is even considered 
remotely the starting quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks this year. Absolutely not. Yeah, I mean, I hear where you're coming from, but at the same time, why are you going out and trading for Sam Howell, right? This was after a lot of these signings that you just laid out had already kind of taken place. So that's where, you know, were they targeting some of these guys that were in free agency, couldn't get them, and then ultimately settled on Sam Howell? I don't know. I think we saw Sam Howell start a bunch of games last year, and they come, and Mike McDonald comes in, he says, you know what? Maybe Sam Howell could be an option for us if Geno can't get it done again. So I'm not under the assumption that Sam Howell doesn't start. I'm with you that Geno's probably the better quarterback in practice, and they probably give him the first crack at it. But if Sam Howell get, gets the job some point during the season, we can't be shocked either. You don't think you, you I, think there's I, I no shoddy be, plays I, at all? Him taking the job from Geno Smith, I would be absolutely shocked. I don't think I do not believe there's all a right. chance in hell he walks into that room, that locker room, that football field, and takes Geno Smith's job. Not a chance in hell. I would be I would be absolutely shocked. Absent an injury, I don't think I don't think there's a chance Sam Howell is is taking any snaps from Geno Smith. No. Yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. I, I think, you know, Gino wasn't very good last year, and now they're going to have a new offense again. Are they going to play an air raid style offense? I don't know. And so is that going to be more conducive to a Gino Smith or to a Sam Howell? And I think we saw Sam Howell do that with, you know, varying success last season. Gino, when you asked him to throw the ball out last year, he wasn't as successful. You know, when he was, you know, between that 25, 30 attempt mark, he was great. When you ask him to throw the ball a little bit more than that, that's when he started to struggle a little bit. So I think if you're looking at who could be the better quarterback for the system, depending again on what they play with all those receivers, it could be a good fit with Sam Howell. Again, it's not necessarily going to be a winning fit, but it could be a good fit. And that's why I think that potentially there could be some value there. That's this is this, this NFL teams pay attention to what the teams are telling you. What they're telling you is they value a backup quarterback. I think it's a very important position for an NFL team, the Seattle Seahawks were a team that were competing for a wild card berth down the stretch. They were decimated up front on their offensive line. Their defense was torn apart last year. And Geno Smith still bested them in every passing metric you can think of outside of volume. I'm just going to say this. This, this is pure hopium if you think he's going to, to play over Geno Smith absent an injury. It's you are infected by the hopium virus, and the only reality that will slap you in the face will cure you from the sickness. So Houston traded, uh, who'd they trade? They traded some picks. 23 and a 7 for 42, a 6th, and the 25, for 25 with the, with the seconds, Vikings, right? right? So now the, the Vikings, Vikings have 11, I believe it's 11, right? And 23, so they have the ammo potentially to trade up to a top five pick. You know, people have talked about Arizona, potentially a trade down spot. The Chargers, potentially a trade down spot. Now the Chargers ain't looking like a trade down spot after some of the moves they made this week. But again, that's kind of what's going around right now. It doesn't seem like they would have the ammo quite yet without adding some more in order to go up to the top three. And of course, the willingness of those teams to go to the go out of the top three does seem pretty limited. We'll see though, Washington and New England could make that move. The Bears doesn't seem like they're trading that pick as it stands right now. Yeah, I've been saying it. I am not convinced that the New England Patriots take a quarterback at three. I'm just, I'm just not convinced. I'm not convinced they take a quarterback at three, but it definitely seems like Minnesota is trying to do something. Minnesota is trying to do something or at least get They're in a striking man. distance to make a move, to make a move. So uh, everybody is talking, J.J. McCarthy to Minnesota, and they're loading up on capital. Do you think that's enough? 23 and 11 to move up to three, to move up to five? Do you think that's enough? So I think the interesting thing about that is, one, I don't think it's enough to move up to three, especially with the QB premium, right? And then you factor in if they go up to five, I think it's an interesting spot because of the moves the Chargers made. Like, they kind of need to draft a wide receiver. So if you're going to get that pick from them, can they get the same caliber receiver at 11, point. which doesn't seem like it, but maybe they could get two guys if they take 11 and 23, they could potentially get Odunze, but I don't think he's going to be there. Like, neighbors Odunze probably both going to go top 10. So 11, not going to be a great spot. They probably have to trade down again and pick guys, you know, between the 18 to 23 range where you might see an A.D. Mitchell go, a Brian Thomas go, and pick up two of those guys. But it could be a lot of maneuvering for the Chargers if they want to make a move like that because they probably aren't getting Odunze or neighbors if they aren't in the top five. All right, Jay, we also had uh, th – this is this is your boy, and I I'm looking for him <laughs> right now. This is definitely your boy. Uh, Kenny Pickett on the move, Jay. Your boy, Kenny Pickett, was traded to Philadelphia, pick swap situation. Kenny Pickett 
on the move to the Philadelphia Eagles to back up Jalen Hurts. Hey, I like it. Philly's got a Philly's got a competent like backup it. that could go in there and go in there, and he's got some experience under center, albeit. So you're limited. ripping on Sam Howe, but you're calling Kenny Pickett an experienced backup quarterback. Well, that's all Sam Howell is, an experienced backup quarterback. They're both the same thing. They're both backup quarterbacks with experience. <laughs> I'm not sitting here giving people false hope that Kenny Pickett's got a shot in hell to start in Philadelphia the same way you were with Sam Howell besting Geno Smith. But Kenny Pickett was traded to the Eagles, which leads us to the big thing, Jay, to the big one. You know who it is. This young man was Talk traded to me. this week. Finally, it's done. It's over. Justin Fields traded, moved, gone, adios, sayonara from the Chicago Bears. And he is now a Pittsburgh Steeler for a sixth-round pick that could potentially turn into a fourth-round pick, depending on how much Justin Fields plays this season. Jay Rich. 51% of snaps. 51% of snaps. Justin Fields is a Pittsburgh Steeler. And how do you feel today, sir, about this landing spot for one Justin Fields? Uh, I mean, for one, we did kind of call it. We did say that this landing spot would be ideal for Fields for a lot of different reasons, and part of it was the offense being in more of a run-first style where he could operate with the running game, play action, hit his receivers, which aren't looking so good right now. But he's probably not going to be the starter, right? Uh, Mike Tomlin's already not. stated that Russell Wilson he's is the not. starter and will be the starter. But now it comes to the conversation is what happens with Fields next? Is this an opportunity for him to start if Russell Wilson stinks? Is it more of a gear for him to rehab his image and Mike Tomlin to kind of help guide him throughout his career? We don't really know what this means for Justin Fields. I think he does deserve a chance to start potentially, especially with the way Russ has looked over the past couple seasons. If he's not looking like a surefire starter in that AFC North, there's definitely a world where they just have to give Justin Fields a shot because at the end of the day, he does deserve an opportunity on a Why? better team. Why does he deserve? Why does he deserve an opportunity? Stop doing this, man. Why does you don't he, think deserve he deserve an opportunity? Why? Why? So one, one, he did have offers from other teams, right? That is true. That was reported by Rapport yesterday. I believe there was five or six other teams that did inquire about Fields, but he wanted to go to Pittsburgh. So that is interesting. Now, maybe that was entirely personal and it had nothing to do with the Steelers organization, but he did choose to go to Pittsburgh and the Bears honored him to do that. And again, you can say he doesn't have a deserve a chance to start. I think he does deserve a I chance just, to I just, start. I'm just, I'm literally just I asking. Wrong with that. I don't need to know. Don't tell me about his pathway to Pittsburgh. I'm truly curious why you think through his three years of football, he deserves another shot. Why, why does he deserve another shot? Because of what he had to deal with in Chicago, right? Dude, the head coaches were bad. The offense coordinators this. were bad. And so now, it's, but you look at the Bears offense now, Ray, and you say, how much does that suck for Fields that this is the team sports, that they're going to be fielding this year? That's sports. And he That's had to sports. deal with the other roster. It is. That's sports. It is. Has nothing, this is not a situation that is exclusive to Justin Fields where you have a player that may be surrounded by a team that has inferior talent or bad coaching. This is not the first time in sport this has happened. This is what happens. You get drafted by some organizations, they know what they're doing. You get drafted by some that aren't. Like that, that that's it doesn't warrant you a, a, a guaranteed opportunity to start again when you've been a piss poor thrower to football. Like it just All right, it, so I'm not every other he, every other first round pick that got a chance to start, you don't, this, you, don't the the, you don't think they deserved it. But you don't think they deserved it either. You think what? none of them deserved it? Some Sam them, Darnold and Baker Mayfield and Sam all Darnold these other starting quarterbacks shot, that are right? first. He didn't deserve but said, it. But, but why didn't he deserve it? Why, why didn't he deserve you're, it? You're, you can't why, take your why, point. Why are you so out there to say he doesn't deserve a shot at all? Because because deserves means you've done something to warrant you getting that opportunity again. That's so, he can't, so he can't work in the Steelers organization I didn't say and prove anything. that he deserves a shot? prove that he deserves a yeah, shot he can do is that. much different than going somewhere and being like, I deserve to be the starter. But hell he's obviously the not no. saying that. Hell he's to the no, you that. don't deserve. He's been terrible. But he can that's earn what I'm it saying. and deserve it. Yeah. That's, yeah. So what's wrong with that? I You're taking what I said and taking wrong. it very literally and well, instead because of people, the, because him that's earning what's that going opportunity. On. 
That's the literal conversation is he deserves another opportunity because the Bears have wronged him in some way. Stop that. That's what I'm saying. It didn't, no, the Bears didn't wrong him. You know how many players land in If that's the case, then Mac Jones deserves another shot because he was, he was wrong more than Justin was. Fields was in Chicago. There's no deserve. You go there. And if you're the better guy, maybe you get an opportunity later. But to say that he deserves another short starting job, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that, man. He can go oh. earn and prove that. I'm 100% yeah. with you. You go in there. But he can do that in Pittsburgh. Mac Jones can't do that in Jacksonville because Trevor Lawrence is there. I, so I hear that. I All I'm saying is he doesn't deserve anything based on what he's put on wax so far. That's all I'm saying. He don't deserve anything. Go in there, prove it improve in those areas and maybe you get yourself another shot but you don't just deserve to be a starting quarterback in the nfl man like hell no i'm not i'm not buying that jay i'm not buying that but I, let's let's just see how many people agree with you let's just scroll through what folks are saying about justin fields i just truly just want to see all right here's uh ian Hardit. shout out to ian it's probably something funny so we'll just keep going here Here's one. If you're a fantasy football advice giver and you think Chicago is the reason Justin Fields failed, take a sabbatical. All right. Um, Justin Fields meeting Russell Wilson at the Steelers facility is the get out meme right here. There's Justin Fields. I'm uh, George Pickens. I'm open. Justin Fields. I, I mean, it's it seems like it's it's on both sides. Justin Fields was more than just a QB for the Bears to me. He was hope, he was humble, he was hardworking, he was gritty, he was electrifying, he was Chicago. So there go there you go. You and you and Topher right here are, are in the fields fields camp that he deserves Ooh, to start you again. Ooh, you scrolling past Justin Jefferson? Oh, what did Jets say? Jets said, well this he is said what Jets said. Play fields. He said he sure he said that. Sure that's what Jefferson said. I, and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that is, you know, NFL respect from one another, but I'm sure he'll be just fine. Um here goes one. Justin Fields is going to turn into a Hall of Fame quarterback. We got one right there. Fields is going to be That's a Hall something. of Famer. Uh, the Steelers should lock up Fields now on a multi-year deal. Just give him a multi-year deal. Just deserves that, too. Um, yeah, I mean, it seems like there's a lot of hopium still out here with uh, with Justin Fields. Saints missed a huge opportunity here. <laughs> Benjamin Solak, same league that doesn't want Justin Fields for anything more than a conditional fourth. Wants to take Jaden second. Overall, very odd with that one right here. And then I think somebody, I saw some comparison to him being Lamar Jackson, but I don't know where that is. But <laughs> neither here nor there, Jay. Seems to be a lot of uh, lot of hopium out there on old fields and in this opportunity in Pittsburgh. I think it is the best of the few landing spots that were available to him with Arthur yeah. Smith there, knowing how he wants to run the ball, how Pittsburgh wants yeah. to commit to the run. Maybe this is a spot where if he got on the field, there'd be – Little pressure for him to at least throw the ball early, but you're looking yeah, at division. You got to deal with Cleveland twice a year. You got to go battle with Lamar and Baltimore twice a year, and then you got to deal with Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase twice a year. Seems like an uphill battle for either of those quarterbacks, man. Seems like an uphill battle for both of those guys. Yeah, but those teams do it anyway. Like they do it anyways. They've done it with Kenny Pickett. They've done it with Mason Rudolph. Like in theory, whether it's Fields or Russ, hopefully it's an upgraded quarterback to where. Maybe they can make a few more plays and they can win some of those games that they would normally lose. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Let's see what the comments are saying. Uh, <laughs> D-Bro said Solak was drunk with that tweet. Shout out to Ben, man. Leave leave Ben alone, uh, D-Bro. That's our boy. That's our boy, D-Bro. Shout out to D-Bro. Always watching, always watching. Here goes one from Don Atwood. Fields wasn't terrible. He at least has elite tools. He hasn't produced to his abilities at this point. Um, he was pretty terrible throwing the football. Terrible as by, a passer, yeah. By every passing metric, he was absolutely terrible. Uh, I don't know how you 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 surmise that he wasn't. Fields will get an opportunity either through injury or bad play by Wilson. Oh yeah, he'll get on the field again. Nobody's saying he ain't gonna play. He will get on the field again, no doubt about it. Let's go one more, Jay. Um, here goes one right here. Pitt also gets a six back in compensation if he walks after next year. Ray is right. He doesn't deserve anything. Am I surprised nobody else took a shot? Yes, but he's not entitled to anything. That's all I'm saying. I agree with that. He's going there, work your tail off, and we'll see what happens with Fields moving forward. Let's move on 
to the running back position, Jay. We had a, a lot of running backs, old faces, and yes. new places. Um, who's the big dog that we want to start with? You know we got to start with the biggest of the big dogs, right, Jay? We got to start with the king. Who is it we for you? Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. I figured, no, I figured you'd start with the king. We got to start with the king. Derrick Henry was traded to the Baltimore, or excuse me, signed by the Baltimore Ravens, not traded. The king is in Baltimore. All everybody could think about is RPO action with Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. What do you think about the landing spot? Derrick Henry to Baltimore, Doc. I think it's perfect, right? It's just, can he stay healthy, right? It's it's the same thing every year for Baltimore running backs, and it's no disrespect. They got the best, biggest dog for the job for a yeah. team that cannot keep their running backs healthy. They got the guy who's pretty much always healthy and always available, and so it's very exciting to think about what he could do in this offense. I think it, it would have been really interesting if he was there while they had um, the previous OC when they ran the ball like crazy, oh, like Roman? just Lamar... Right yeah. there, you go, Greg Roman, Roman, Greg Roman. running the ball with Lamar Jackson and Derek. Like it would have, he would have broke rushing records under that offense. Uh, but still, they're going to run the ball a lot very effectively. It's it's interesting to see how this will turn out. But yeah, Henry finally landing in Baltimore after it seems like two years we've been trying to get him on that Ravens offense. Why I wonder why I just I'm curious why Tennessee, knowing good and damn well he wasn't going to resign there, why they wouldn't have traded him for something. I, I wonder. Maybe I, team. I think maybe it's, I think it's Vrabel, right? Because, well, Vrabel also talked about how he didn't want to tank. He didn't want to throw it in. Like, that's not what he's about. And that's I think that's part of the reason, potentially, that might have got him fired. Is I could see pressure from the, from the top being like, yo, you guys are obviously not going to win. Like, let's throw in the towel. Let's, like, you know, stop playing all these guys. Trade Henry. And he didn't want to do that. So I, I could see a world where that's part of it as well. Is like, he didn't want to throw in the towel. They didn't want to. He didn't want to trade Henry. So they didn't. Obviously, he got it, got somewhere it. else. But, I mean, what was he really worth in the trade market? A seventh? A sixth? I like, mean, he was anything. I'm just, saying, was just to get, fifth, right? I'm just saying to get anything for him. But, yeah, yeah. Prob you're probably right. Uh, we had DeAndre Swift, I think, immediately. As soon as, like, the yeah, tampering like period opened right up, DeAndre Swift, he had a three-year deal to Chicago. So, kind of buries those Roshan Johnson. Khalil Herbert kind of makes that backfield pretty, pretty muddy, especially with some of the other moves that they've made. Tony Pollard got a three-year, $21 million deal with the Tennessee Titans. So you got Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard forming a nice duo in Tennessee. That's good for Will Levis, as well as a receiver that we'll talk about here shortly. Josh Jacobs, four-year, $48 million deal with the Packers. This one was random to me, Big but deal. good fit for good fit for Josh Jacobs. And they subsequently released Aaron Jones on the back of that. They asked him to take a massive pay cut, and Aaron Jones was like, screw y'all. And he went to the rival Minnesota Vikings on a one-year deal. So we've got Arizona. I meant for we've got Aaron Jones in Minnesota, and we've got Josh Jacobs in Green Bay. Antonio Gibson, three-year deal with the Patriots. Gus Edwards, two-year deal. I thought this was very, I thought this was very Sneaky. telling. And I talked about it the moment they signed Gus Edwards, and then they turned around and signed Will Disley. Pay attention to what the teams are telling you. And the Chargers have told us what they want to do in 2024. How that affects uh, Justin Herbert, we'll I'll talk about that another day. Austin Eckler went to Washington. He is a commander on a two-year deal. Zach Moss, two-year deal with the Bengals, which means no Joe Mixon, who is now in Houston, who signed a two-year $19 million deal with the Texans. Love the fit of Joe Mixon in Houston. A.J. Dillon, yep. thank goodness the Cowboys did not offer him any money. He's back in <laughs> Green Bay to back up. Josh Jacobs, Trey Sermon signed a one-year deal. DJ Dallas got a three-year, $8 million deal by the Arizona Cardinals. Devin Singletary, man. Singletary just getting it, man. He's just making a, making a living for himself at a replaceable Motor, position. Baby. But, hey, played good last year. Got three years from the Giants, which means Saquon Barkley, Jay. We finally got that news. We kind of knew this was coming for a good year and a half now. But Saquon Barkley gone from the Giants, and he is a Philadelphia Eagle, Jay Rich, a lot of running back signings, a lot of running yep. back movement outside of Derrick Henry, Joe Mixon, Saquon Barkley, which this is a, a monster deal because of what they paid him. I believe $26 yep. million dollars guaranteed for Saquon Barkley. Yeah, what do you think pretty... about this one for fantasy? Scott and I talked about it on uh, on one of our free agency live streams. I think there's a real chance Saquon... He gives us one of those one of those just swan song Saquon seasons where he gives you that top five running back really? production in this offense. I do. I think I, I'm, I look at what Philly did when they had Miles Sanders and how well that offense ran through Miles Sanders, Jalen Hurts and company. It did. It did. Okay. Go look at, but who is their OC, right? 
I know that I'm getting there. Uh, OC is a problem, and I think they realized that last year with Brian Johnson. But getting yeah. a dynamic running back like Saquon here and probably taking a look at some of the things that they did, did last year that kind of faltered towards the end of the season and getting back to some of the things that Shane Steichen implemented the year before, mm-hmm. and you saw that carry over in Indy. It's a big loss. I mean, hell, we talked about that the moment he left to go to, go, go to Indy. We loved the fit of yep. Steichen in Indianapolis with A. Rich, but... Talk about Saquon to Philadelphia, Jay, and any other running back free agency signing that you thought was very, very impactful for fantasy. Uh, So we'll talk about Barkley and and just I I think it's going to be a little bit overrated from a fit perspective. Like if you're drafting as a top five running back, he could be that. But I think he could be more so in like a five to ten range where he's not as much of a difference maker as maybe you hoped he would be, right? Like, if he's drafted as RB3, RB2, potentially, because they think he's got this 12, well, I don't think he's going to be drafted ceiling. that high. I think he's going to return that value. I don't think... There's not a chance I don't we'll think he's see, getting drafted man. as a top... No, he's not. I'm telling you, he's, he's gonna not. He's going to be drafted Derrick Henry, though. I'm telling you, he's not getting drafted inside the top three, top five. I've done enough FFPC and underdog drafts. You've got Brees, you've got Bijan, you've got Gibbs, you've got Kyron, you... You've got Christian McCaffrey. He's not going to be drafted as a top five back. I'm talking about he could give we'll you see, potentially We'll see, man. There's a lot of time for that. A lot of time for that. Because, again, Jalen Hurts still going to score a lot of touchdowns. Philly still throws the ball a lot. So where, where is this production going to come from? Because there's not a lot of passes to be caught from running backs in the system. Now, the system may change a bit, and Jalen Hurts may change the way he operates, but I don't know if the running back position has been very fruitful outside of that. Again, the Miles Sanders year is one thing because that was Miles Sanders surprising people, Right. So if Miles Sanders Jay, surprising people you, and Saquon Barkley, what he's doing? Have you looked at what Phil, DeAndre Swift had 230 carries and 50 targets last year, Jay? DeAndre okay. Swift, what are you talking about? But if Where you give that to Saquon Barkley, are you happy with that? Or aren't you expecting 230 carries and 50 targets from Saquon Barkley? But you're, you're asking where is it going to come from? So, yes, if Swift was getting almost 280 opportunities last year, you don't think there's room for Saquon to at least do that? Yeah, he could at least do that, but is it going to be on the very high end like you're speaking of? Because the touchdowns are going to be a problem. So that that's, yes, he can get all the work in the world, but if he's not scoring the touchdowns, that high-end production that you're speaking of isn't going to exist. That, and, and while you don't think that the Saquon Barkley hype train can happen, we know that it can happen. We know that Saquon Barkley can get the people going, whether you like it or not. Once he starts running around in those Philly jerseys and with Jalen Hurts in the RPO, people are going to get excited and his ADP is probably going to rise. So while today it may be one spot, it could definitely rise to where potentially it's no longer a value and potentially a letdown spot for Saquon Barkley. That's all that I'm so, saying. But today I'm not is drafting the day for what's... That's not, that's not the reality today. But you're asking he's not me what top. he's doing in 2024, right? That's months from now. We're going to get there. The ADP is going to shift. It's going to change. It, giving advice let's, now let's, let's take a is bet. change I the bet you later. his ADP, he will not be a top five running back before September. Bet you that. Okay. I bet that. So then give me six. Dude, what what are you what are we arguing I was asking, here? Give me, what are, what give me is, six then. You said, and I could rewind, you said where's the production? Where's all of this gonna come from? All I did yeah. was cite what DeAndre Swift did last year, the mm-hmm. investment that the Eagles made in Barkley, giving him damn near $30 million guaranteed. I'm not mm-hmm. talking about no touchdowns or his ADP. I'm letting you know he's not being drafted as a top five running back today. If you acquire him today, he's got the shot to return top five value when the season hits. But to your direct comment about there not being enough work for him, that's bullshit. There's plenty enough. And they just gave him $30 million. Okay, fine. Top five running back. He'll be drafted as a top five running back for sure. Okay. All right. Well, he won't. Sure. So let's let's keep going. What else do you want to talk about from the running backs? Since Saquon um, so is going to I, jump, I 10 was surprised by Austin Eckler's contract. Didn't you? Were you did like this two year eight point three four to go to Washington? Like, couldn't he have found a better spot or a better team or like that? To me, was probably when you look at the list of all the contracts. Why didn't Austin Eckler end up in Cincy? Right for like literally. $340,000 more and on a much better team that has winning aspirations. Like that to me is very interesting from both a fantasy perspective and the money they gave him. Like he's probably in a committee with Brian Robinson. Is that like yeah, what he wanted? And where would you even think about drafting him? Because I'm if not. he's in a committee and he's not, yeah, like 
he'll probably be overdrafted, but that that one was probably by far. And I think Josh Jacobs is going to surprise people. I really do. You like, like you like the I, I work, like Jacobs. I like the, Jacobs. The work like, I like they the give to running backs in Green Bay with the floor. Jordan Love taking a step forward. Like, I think they can lean on the running game more and ha not have Love have to throw 30 touchdown passes. The, uh, the Eckler one, because of what he has done for fantasy for years, is very surprising and what his role is going to be in Washington. But definitely, uh, the Jacob signing is probably the most intriguing to me. I think that one is really going to surprise people. Because I know I like that LaFleur is great for the running game. Um, and I think that Jacobs will probably be one of the better running backs he's ever had. But I'm curious, is can he outdo what Jones did? But Jones was a top 12 running back for a long time. Holker Jones is efficient, man. Jones, yeah. Jones, is, Jones is efficient. I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I like that spot for Josh Jacobs. I know it's dirty, man. I know it's dirty. And I know the player has no dynasty value whatsoever. I really like Gus Edwards to the Chargers, Jay. I really, I really like okay. That yeah, with, spot, with Greg Roman, I have been, right? I'm just, Jim Harbaugh is who he is, man. He is. And we've been saying it since the time that he, he, he signed on to be the coach with the Chargers. He and Greg Roman, they haven't held their spots in the coaching ranks for all the time that they have to, to acquiesce to anybody else at this point. Jim Harbaugh is going to do the same thing that he did in Michigan, that he did in Frisco, mm -hmm. He's going to build up front through the trenches. They're going to play ball-controlled offense. They're going to find a quarterback to, or have their quarterback do the things that they want him to do, which is just control the offense. I think this is I think this is a real – I'm just paying attention to what the team is telling you. And the first thing that they did, they signed Will Disley and Gus Edwards. And then they shipped off Keenan and Allen. And Hayden Hurst. And Hayden right? Hurst. Yeah. They are going to run the ever-living crap out of the ball. And I so think Hayden Gus Hurst, Edwards also is – also Greg Roman product, right? And then Colby Parkinson, you know three some. years, th or Will Disley, sorry, three years, 14 million. That one's intriguing, too. If you're in tight end premium leagues and some other stuff, like, they will use the tight end. So both those okay. tight ends, Disley and Hurst, are I interesting like I from, like, like a dart perspective, um, especially with the pass catchers they have now in, in the, for the Chargers. It's an interesting spot for both those guys. And, and, and for people who don't realize, like, Seattle split up all their tight ends. They had three tight ends on the roster, and now it's just Noah Fant. Which is Hulk, good for Parkinson, Fant. Well, yeah, Disley went to the Chargers, and Parkinson went to the Rams on a massive deal for uh, tight ends. But we don't need to talk about tight ends too much. It was just well, we're some of those deals are very it, intriguing so to me. We got Parkinson to the Rams. Gasecki yeah. one-year deal with Cincinnati. Irv Smith, one-year deal with Kansas City. Gerald Everett, two-year deal with Chicago. Troutman back with Denver, of course, Sean Payton was bringing him back, and you got Hayden Hurst, one-year deal with the Jags. You don't have it on the show notes, but Jonu Smith also signed, I believe, a one- or two-year deal oh, yeah, in Miami. Miami. Yeah, in Miami. Yeah, so yeah. Jonu Smith. For the tight end position, I think Noah Fant going back to Seattle is big. I really like that move yeah. for Noah Fant. Parkinson to the Rams. It's a lot of money to give a tight end. You know, the Rams yeah. want to run a lot of 11 personnel, so got to have a tight end that could block in that type of system as well. Hayden Hurst, I don't look at him as anything other than a blocking option, and I'm selling the hell out of Irv Smith if anybody believes he's the next Travis Kelsey. So he can absolutely go off of my roster for that. Let's um, yeah, I, I don't think I don't know if there's anything else from the running backs. I, Jay, I know it's 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 a smaller signing, not a great player, but at cost, I think he could return some value. Again, I'm looking at what you have to pay versus what you can get out. Uh, Devin Singletary to the Giants, man. I just yeah. You know, if he's going to get work and going to get volume, I'm fine with. He's not going to cost you anything. He's going to cost you absolutely nothing. And we already talked about like the Gus Edwards. you like him or Zach Moss in Cincinnati? Man, I, I'll just say this about Cincy with Zach Moss. I think, he's and this is just my opinion, the fact that they let Mixon go shows a confidence and belief in not just Zach Moss that he can carry the load. I think it shows a, a hidden confidence, a quiet confidence and what Chase Brown also showed down the stretch. I don't yeah. believe that Chase Brown is going to be some superstar. I'm not pegging him in to be the next Jalen Warren, Tony Pollard, but he did show enough, especially as a receiving running back, that he can handle that workload for all 17 games. And then if he can get some bonus touches in between the 20s, then that's great too. If you're telling me right now that Chase Brown is going to be the four-minute back, the four-minute back, he's going to be on the field in two-minute yeah. situations. He's going to be on the field on third downs. I think it's a sneaky, sneaky little move 
to grab Chase Brown because I personally don't believe they're going to invest in running back early, not after doing this. It's just not the way the Cincinnati operates. So I think it's going to be Chase Zach Brown Moss. Was, uh, fourth rounder or fifth rounder last year. So they, they could invest later and in they, the draft. But then they brought back Travion Williams as well. They re-signed him. Yeah. So they've got three backs on the roster yeah. right now. I just don't believe that football-wise that running back in the second round is going to be a priority no, for the no. Cincinnati Bengals. they got a lot of other holes that they need to feel, fill on that team, which is a good segue to the wide receiver position, Jay, because we had some smaller signings. You had Van Jefferson going to Pittsburgh on a one-year deal. Noah Brown back to the Houston Texans. K.J. Osborne, interesting deal to New England. They are just loading up on wide receiver threes and fours. Michael Gallup got the jousting axe from the Dallas Cowboys. Curtis Samuel, three years, $24 million from the Buffalo Bills. What do you think about Curtis Samuel to Buffalo? This was one I didn't, especially with the Khalil Shakir hype, I wasn't envisioning another one. And then they brought back Dawson Knox, and they've got Dalton Kincaid. Yeah. What the hell are the Bills doing? What are the Bills doing? I'm Ray. You know me, man. I'm a, I am love Curtis Samuel. I'm a big I like Curtis, Samuel, too. I'm I intrigued. like him, too. It's it's what does Buffalo want to do this year, right? Because historically, the slot role has been very fruitful on the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen loved to throw the slot. Stephon Diggs, we don't really know what's going on with him. Is he declining? Is it his chemistry with Josh Allen? Is it he's pissing people off? Is he going to get traded? We don't know. They did sign Matt Collins to play outside uh, to kind of replace that Gabe Davis role. If they don't replace it in the draft, just again, another filler piece. Doesn't really matter for fantasy. But on the inside, you have Khalil Shakur. You now have Curtis Samuel on a three-year, $24 million deal. Who's going to be the slot? I don't know. It, it, it may be a mix and match of both, at which point you don't really want either one for fantasy. But I'm definitely intrigued by Curtis Samuel because I think we know that he can be a great slot option for the Buffalo Bills, and we saw that in Washington. He's been a guy who can catch five, six passes a game. At that point, he's usable enough for fantasy and PPR. And so if you can do that on the Bills, he would be great. The problem is, is it will be him, will it be Shakur? We don't know. And that's the biggest problem. I think Samuel has to be the slot. He's obviously not going to play outside. Does it bump, you know, Shakir outside? Like DB is kind of saying, potentially. Um, but I don't know if he's going to be as successful outside. So I think at that point, I'd say give who's me Samuel. That? Who's who's saying that? Uh, Derek. Derek said Shakir bumped to the boundary or the bench. And yeah, I think that's that's what could happen. He could be, get bumped outside or get benched. But like you said, he did see some success there. So maybe they do give him a shot. But just I think Samuel's the better player and better fit for the offense, right? People need to understand, ever since they lost Cole Beasley, they've been looking for a slot because he got 100 targets every single year. And if Samuel can fill that role, he will be usable and honestly probably pretty Shit, good he was usable football. last year. People didn't want yeah, to really was, pay him. He was usable last year. Um, Shakir to the boundary? I don't know, man. I, he wouldn't be very good, I, I don't think, out there. I but I don't know. I don't know about that yeah. one. Let's talk about one of your boys, though. You love this player. And he just got a monster, monster deal by the Tennessee Titans. Calvin yeah. Ridley, Tennessee Titans with Brian Callahan. This is going to be a different looking offense, different looking team. Jay, Calvin Ridley alongside DeAndre Hopkins, Chigo Conquo, the upgraded running back room. You've got, uh, you, you've got two running backs that can carry the ball, Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears. They do have a, a deficiency at the offensive line, which I believe they are going to aggressively approach that position in the draft. But talk about Calvin Ridley's fit with the Tennessee Titans. Ray, this is tough for me. I've been a Tennessee Titans hater for probably the past, what, three, four years now? You have. Big I may time have hater. to revert that stance a little bit. I may have to revert that stance. But honestly, Ray, I think when I look at this team – from a fantasy perspective, it's very difficult to figure out how it's going to work out. Because and, Hopkins is uh, uh, still going to get his targets. He had 136 last year. He had 136, yeah. 76 receptions, over 1,000 yards, 8 TDs. And we can say there are probably two to three missed touchdown opportunities oh, between sure. he and T-Law. Sure. I'm just conservatively sure. speaking. So you're talking about a player who's a 1,000-yard receiver, give you 8 to 10 touchdowns a season. This has got to be good for Will Levis. Well, that's that's kind of where I was getting, right? Is that all of these signings and kind of what they're doing, it makes me a little bit at least intrigued by Will Levis because at this point, he's either going to be pretty decent and probably better than we expect, 
or he's going to suck and they're going to know he's not the guy, right? When you have DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, Chico Conquo, two competent running backs that can run the ball and catch passes, the offensive line is still an issue, and, and we definitely understand that. But for fantasy football, we don't really care as much about the offensive line. I mean, it, does, it, it plays a role in everything, of course. But it's like, can he produce something and show us a little bit at the NFL level to where we could be like, yeah, he can be a decent quarterback for fantasy and potentially be a guy who can be a multi-year starter in the NFL. I think when you're talking about Ridley and how he falls in with wide receivers, it's difficult because I don't know how Callahan is going to treat Levis. Is he going to really like just sling it every single game? Do they still try and run the ball a lot like they did before? I think that's the part that I'm still trying to figure out. I don't know if you take Will Levis and just because he has DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley, you start airing it out and treating him like he's Joe Burrow because he's not Joe Burrow. Right. And so how do you kind of balance that from a fantasy perspective and say, okay, Calvin Ridley's pretty good, but Jacksonville threw the ball a ton, right? And when he's in Atlanta, they threw the ball a ton. In Tennessee, they don't historically throw the ball a lot, but where they're coming from in Callahan, they did throw the ball a lot in Cincinnati. So I think that's kind of the balancing act from a fantasy perspective we have to figure out. You know, 120 for sure, but I think how does it work with Hopkins? Do they kind of balance each other out to where both are kind of just like wide receiver twos wide receiver threes and can levis actually support both of those players because if i was drafting i'd probably be more inclined to take a hopkins assuming he can produce similar numbers to ridley but ridley's going to have the higher adp all right jay let's go another wide receiver i know you like this player but you don't really care for the quarterback much deontay johnson <laughs> was traded to the Carolina Panthers early in the process. So Deontay Johnson, now the number one target for Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers. Do you like Deontay Johnson in Carolina? I love it. I absolutely love it. How are you feeling about this fit? I feel pretty good about it. I think he's going to be better than he was in Pittsburgh to some extent. But I'm curious how it's going to work in this new offense, right? We love Canales and what he did for Baker Mayfield, but... Is Adam Thielen still going to be that guy in the slot who gets a lot of targets? And it's, can it's Bryce Deontay Young Johnson. feed the receiver? Well, that's that's the conversation, though. Is is Thielen going to still be in the slot taking up some targets where Bryce Young was obviously comfortable? And can Bryce Young deliver the ball to the outside? How is that going to work? Other, if it was just Deontay there, oh, man, are, he would are you really put him in the so slot. Are you, you're really concerned about Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen. No, I'm concerned about Bryce Young getting the ball outside. If Thielen's in the slot constantly... And taking up that role where Deontay would absolutely cook. You put Deontay in Adam Thielen's role last season. Outside. He's wide receiver one. Thielen could play outside. Thielen could barely play inside this season. But then he put was him great outside. for fantasy. What are you missing then? Deontay Johnson is going to. I'm not. I'm not worried about Adam Thielen at all. At I'm not all. worried about Adam Thielen, but Deontay would absolutely cook in the slot. He would well, cook he, in the slot. But if then he's not going to play in the him. slot, but if he's not going to play the slot because of Thielen, then then. How how is he going to succeed if Bryson can't deliver the ball to the boundary? He couldn't get how the ball you, to Shark. He couldn't get, couldn't get the ball to why do you? I mean, shit. Uh, I'm not going to go down the Mingo path, but DJ Shark wasn't even there half the season, Jay. Wasn't even out there. Like, I'm not, I'm not worried about the placement of Adam Thielen versus Deontay Johnson. You can go line Adam Thielen up at, at the Z. Line him up at the Z for all we care. Like, it's going to Deontay Johnson. I think Bryce can get the ball to the – he needed somebody that can get open. That's what Deontay Johnson does. He gets mm -hmm. open quickly. He wins off the line of scrimmage like that. It's, it's He could – they're NFL quarterbacks. He could throw the ball to the X receiver. Like, he could throw it out there. You got to have somebody that can win on that on, on, out there to be open to, to get the ball too. So – uh, I'm not worried about that at all. I think they will figure out the happy balance of Adam Thielen – to make sure that Deontay Johnson gets fed. I think it's a great spot for Deontay Johnson. Jay, I did not see this one coming you, at you, all, dude. But that, but well, that's because you, 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 you love Bryce Young. And I'm not, not, I'm not as in with you on Bryce Young. What is that? What where, is getting de how does that have to do? What does that have to do with anything about love for Bryce Young? It's a, it's a reality that none of the receivers were able to win early last year. They could not win off the line. You go trade for Deontay Johnson, that happens immediately. What does that have to do yeah. with Bryce Young? Because Bryce Young still has to get him the ball. Okay. And so, so if did, you're concerned about Bryce Young delivering the just, ball. I, we weren't even talking about Bryce. You don't think Bryce Young well, can throw think, the ball I to think the outside? There could, there could be opportunities for Deontay to have a great season, but I'm not saying that, like, oh, yeah, I'm all in on Deontay because he's playing on Carolina. Carolina stinks. They're terrible. 
And while I like Canales, I don't think that it's going to be a revelation for Deontay to play in a non-Pittsburgh offense. He's been great in Pittsburgh. He's been great for years. He gets a ton no of targets. No one said that he wasn't. I said this was a good landing spot for him. We knew he was going to get moved after he was walking around on the field. This is a spot to where he should walk into being the number one target earner. And I think that wasn't as crystal clear in Pittsburgh as you do. I don't think that was crystal clear had he stayed in Pittsburgh, not just with the system changes, but with George Pickens taking another step in the faith that Pittsburgh has is, is seemingly placed into him that he can go be the guy for the team, moving Deontay Johnson. All I said was this is a good landing spot for him to fall into what should be at least 130 targets, which he's historically done throughout his entire career. Yeah, yeah, like that's fine. But again, quality of targets go down potentially. The touchdown the upside goes whoa, down. Like the quality of target, you mean the quality of target from Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph and who else did they have to the quality of target go down? How how good was it, it in could. Pittsburgh? How good was it I with mean, Kenny it Pickett? It was again, he's playing in the slot, so he was getting the ball easily. Right, Kenny Pickett was hitting him inside most of the time and sometimes outside. Keenan Allen traded to the Bears. Keenan Allen, I did not see this, this one this coming. This is ridiculous. This is they outrageous. talked about moving off of one of Allen or Mike Williams, and this came after Jay, after they already released Mike Williams. Then they then they traded Keenan Allen to Chicago. I don't know what what did they get in return for Keenan? Do you remember? It was a what fourth round pick. Yeah. So fourth they asked Keenan to take a pay cut. He said no, and it kind of forced their hand to trade him, and Chicago was the uh the team that wanted to get him for a fourth rounder. Well, you said this was ridiculous. Outrageous. You said this is outrageous. outrageous. Like this, you is, this is this is out. You think this, this is, is disrespectful all, like, to Keenan Allen? Oh, no. No, no, no. Keenan Allen's getting his money. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's a business, feel bad right? for having to go to Chicago, going from going from L.A. to Chicago. That sucks a little bit. You know, he's been in Chicago. He's been in L.A. for, or I guess not L.A. for a long time. San Diego, then L.A. But, I mean, with Caleb Williams, it's it's a good fit, right? Like, he's he's probably going to see, who do you think has the better season, Keenan Allen or DJ Moore? But I bet it's Keenan Allen. The better season? Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll still go DJ Moore. I'll still go DJ Moore. Okay. I bet it's Keenan Allen. I bet it's Keenan Allen. But it's interesting, right? Like, I think this makes drafting Caleb Williams way more appealing in fantasy football now. Hell yeah, Because he, ha he has Hell yeah, it does. guys, right? I mean, he does it Jay. worry you at all, though? Like, well, does it worry you that it DJ Moore could be too highly drafted and Keenan it, it, Allen, it another guy who's very me. highly drafted? It does worry me because there's a lot of weapons. There, I mean, you've got, Ken you've got two alpha target earners in DJ Moore and Keenan yep. Allen. You've got Cole Komet, who did his thing as a, 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 last year with, with Justin Fields. And then you added a Gerald Everett into that equation. Yeah. And you brought along a DeAndre Swift with two running backs that were already on the roster. Shit, who knows? They and might they could be add in the a receiver, to, yeah. A, to add another third-round receiver, fourth-round receiver to throw him in the yeah. slot to make sure that Caleb Williams has everything possible in order to be well, successful. Well, feels Doesn't like a luxury, work. right? Like, they could take a receiver Dude, at nine if they want to. It Everything that's happened to Chicago, Jay, has been a luxury for this franchise. Legitimately, the move with Kara, I guarantee in their wildest dreams, they never thought that that, that pick was going to turn into the number one overall pick. Yeah. And then, shit, if they would have if they would have lost a couple of games, that ninth pick would have been even higher. This is just gift after gift, right? You got Montez Sweat last year. I think Chicago, Chicago's in a really good spot to turn this thing around, Jay. Let's talk a couple of couple of more receivers before we get out of here today. The chat says we have been going at it uh, to get going at it to, today, and they, they like that. They like that that argumentative stuff. Here, here we go right here. Chiefs, Hollywood Brown, Jay Rich, Hollywood Brown, one year deal. The Kansas City, I believe they cut as soon as the Super Bowl was over. MVS and MBS, Justin Watson yeah. were were gone. McCole Hardman, who knows what's going on there? Sky Moore, R.I.P. Where's the sad trombone for all the Sky Moore truthers? That is over, gone, Debra, done you still with. here? Uh, uh, what? I'm I'm still here. I am still here. Who? But uh, Hollywood Brown. What do you think about him and KC? Man, it's it's so it's interesting. You like I think it? Ray the, I I like it a lot. I'm curious, like. How high is too high for Hollywood Brown? Oh, like, you're, you like I it, think, like it. You like it, like I'm, it. 
Ah, you like but, it, like it. The only thing that kind of is interesting about this, and we've seen it over the few years, is will Patrick Mahomes target him like out the gate, right? Like, I don't think it was, I don't think it was necessarily a rookie issue with Rasheed Rice, with Sky Moore, like. I think they can build the chemistry in the offseason, and he's going to be the starting X receiver for this team. But will the chemistry kind of hit right away with Mahomes? And will he be that guy who's getting, you know, six to seven targets a game and putting up, you know, 70, 80 yards potentially, like with the touchdown I, upside? Can he be a top 12 guy? Like, and no. would you draft him there? No, no, but I love okay. him in best ball. I love him in best ball. He okay. is astronomically better than MBS and Justin Watson. I don't think this stops Kansas City from drafting a wide receiver or two in 2024, but I do think it knocks them out of pick 32 wide receiver range. I do not believe yeah. that with what's going on with Legere Legereus Sneed and potentially some of the cornerbacks that could be available to them at 32, it's a nice cornerback uh, class. I do not believe they're taking a wide receiver at 32. I think they've got their starting, their X and their Z between Rasheed Rice and Hollywood Brown. And I think yep. this spells That's good things for this, this jersey we're giving away on the draft stream. I think this is big for number four, Rasheed Rice. I know there are a lot of people out there worried so no about concerns? the targets. I have zero concerns. Zero. Wow, okay. they, they each have wide receiver after their name, but they play two completely different roles for the Chiefs. I think this is about as good... Who I would be concerned about would have been like a Keenan Allen ending up in Kansas City, a Calvin yeah. Ridley ending up in Kansas City, Mike Williams, Hollywood Brown, these kind, Gabe Davis, no issues. I think this is as good of an outcome for Rasheed Rice as you could have hoped for if you roster him in fantasy. I think it's a very good thing. I do not believe they'll be in the market for a wide receiver at 32 at this point and a nice one year no, deal. Not. For Hollywood Brown, seven million bucks, and you get Hollywood opposed to paying three for well, thirty nine. Sure you know, for Gabe I'm, Davis. I'd be curious. Like, did he take it? Did he just take discount? I want to go to Kansas City. I want to win, right? I like, don't know. It feels like that's what happened. He's got Hollywood some injuries should too. Have got, he's got, he should he's have got, got a little bit of injury history too. Fifteen million, right? Like, he's a thousand yard receiver. He's been pretty damn good, even on Arizona. Should've. Maybe, right? Like he he probably could have got a pig paid. Maybe he's just trying to go for the three peat. Win it all and then and then cash in after that. Still young um, too. Still young too. Um yeah, very young. Mooney, three for thirty nine for the Falcons. Love that. I Crazy love deal. it for Darnell Mooney with with Kirk Cousins. And our boy Michael Pittman Jr., three years, seventy million. Indianapolis did right by him. Read up Michael Pittman Jr. I don't think we missed any of the big signings. I think there's a lot of Fallout no, then ancillary we talk, we talk moves. About Gabe Davis. I do like the Gabe Davis to Jacksonville. Gabe Davis well. to Jacksonville. I think he fits a role for them as well. I'll yeah. just say this. Uh, give me all the Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram that I can get. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. want Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram. Fallout from this stuff, you know, I, I think this pretty much locks in Arizona for definitely taking a receiver, whether that be Marv, Malik Neighbors. But this is very good for Trey McBride. Very good yeah. for Trey McBride. Some other low-key free agency winners, Jay. Kyron Williams, what the Rams have done through free agency, bolstering their interior offensive line. Yep. Kyron is in for another big season. He he they brought nobody in from a running back position to 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 take work from him. Will they draft a running back? Sure. Every team should probably draft a running back or two, but I think this is as good of news for Kyron Williams as it get. Talking about the Cardinals, Trey McBride, James Conner, very good for both of those guys. You touched on it. Caleb Williams, how good is Chicago looking as a landing spot for a rookie quarterback to go into? My Dallas Cowboys, Jay, I got nothing to say about them. I got nothing to say. I think it's, I think, real talk, I think Dallas needs a rebuild. I, I, think they're, I think they're in rebuild mode. I, I believe the window for the Cowboys okay. is gone. I think they should try to rebuild, but they're about to do stupid stuff and pay a lot of people a lot of money and get stuck in purgatory. A lot of money to death. Every, every team oh, in the NFC East got better over free agency except the Dallas Cowboys. Every single team. Giants, Commanders, and the Eagles. I got nothing to say about my boys, man. Anything you want to lead the people with before we get out of here, Jay? No, man. No, I think we, I think we hit on it. I think, for me, uh, the most exciting team still is the Minnesota Vikings and what they choose to do. 
They traded for another first round pick. We're waiting to see. Uh, we talked about it, I think, a few shows ago about how, like, now they're really desperate for a quarterback. And it's not necessarily because they need a quarterback. It's because they need to re-sign Justin Jefferson. And that still hasn't happened. We're still waiting for it. And if they don't figure this out, a lot of people are probably going to get fired. And he's probably going to be gone. So I think it's a lot of pressure on this organization to get this right. Because if they get it wrong, man, it, it could be really, really bad. And it's, it's rare you see something like this. But they are definitely in a very difficult spot where they need to pay their starting receiver and he's hasn't committed yet because he doesn't know who his quarterback is and that's a very difficult spot to be in all right there it is make sure you tap out check out all the content over here on destination devi scott connor dropped destination dynasty this morning we got over reaction pod tomorrow again partnership with underdog fantasy if you want in to win all this stuff that we're giving away at the beginning of the show Use code DDD. We will have the biggest and the bestest draft stream of all time. I, I mean, I'm taking a page out of old 45's book. It will be the biggest. It is going to be dope. You don't want to miss it. Make sure that you're there. Three straight days. You D use DDD. You get two entries into the giveaways. We appreciate all the love, all the support. Hit the thumbs up button. Like the content. Jay, hit that Fizzle Dollars outro music before we get out of here. Appreciate all of y'all in the building. Let me see who we still got in here. I see Dan Edwards, Marlon, Gene, uh, Little XL in the building, Ty DeClaire, Zeus White. Yeah, Jimbo, forgot about Zamir White. Big winner. Big biceps, too, at that uh, at that press conference. Uh, you know, pause right there. Alex C. in the building, Ty DeClaire. I saw my girl Joe in here. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all rocking with Destination Debbie. For Jay Rich, Ray G, y'all know what it is. We out of this thing, Jay Rich. Once I can find uh, the outro button, let me let me find it real quick. We love y'all. We'll see y'all next Monday. Peace. Thank you.